Marlon Brando was considered the godfather of acting, an iconic actor who revolutionized the genre of acting. But behind the scenes, he's the real embodiment of tragedy and sad story. He fought his way from nothing to the top of Hollywood, but along the line, something from his past caused him to start on doing all the success he's achieved throughout the years. And it got so bad that his wife hired thugs to kidnap their own kid. And that kid ended up growing up to become a murderer. How? I know it's a lot to unpack, but stick with us as we tell you the wild story of one of the Hollywood's greats, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando was born on April 3, 1924 in Omaha, Nebraska. He was the only son of Marlon Brando Sr., a traveling salesman, and Dorothy Julia Pennebaker, a stage actress. Brando's early life was fairly inconsequential. He wasn't particularly good in academics, but excelled in acting and athletics. He had a reserved nature, which was in part due to his parents' unstable marriage and abuse. His relationship with his father was especially constrained. He mentioned in an interview, Most of my childhood memories of my father have been ignored. I was his namesake, but nothing I did ever pleased or even interested him. He enjoyed telling me I couldn't do anything right. Brando's mother was often away from home, which resulted in him developing a closer bond with the family's housekeeper. However, the housekeeper eventually got married and left Brando in a solitary home with two alcoholics, where one belittled him and the other was always away at work. This was a major setback for a young child and led him to develop abandonment issues which later reflected in his marriages. Despite his introverted personality, he was also a notable troublemaker and was infamous for his pranks and his high temper. This rebellious attitude got him expelled when he was caught riding a bicycle in the school's hallways. Tired of his shenanigans, his father made him enlist in the military academy where he continued to excel at acting before he was put on probation for being disrespectful to an officer. Confined in the academy, he tried to escape but was later caught and the possibility of expulsion was brought up. Fortunately, Brando had gained quite a reputation and his peers protested that expulsion was a harsh punishment forcing the academy to give him another chance. But Brando had had enough of the academy. He wanted to settle for the military as soon as he turned 18. However, when the time came, a knee injury that he had sustained in the academy made him unfit for the military. He was devastated by his ruined career. However, Brando was unaware of what life had in store for him. Brando's acting endeavor began when he traveled to New York to study under Stella Adler, a prominent acting coach of the time. Stella would teach Brando the Stanislavski system, a technique that would explore the character more than through simple gestures. This was perhaps the happiest point in Brando's life. In the A&E biography episode on Brando, George Euling said Brando fell into acting because he was accepted there. He wasn't criticized. It was the first time in his life that he had heard good things about himself. After years of belittling by his father, Brando finally found his true passion. His life was on the upswing and he was destined for success and happiness. But while he found success, happiness eluded him. In the following decades, Marlon Brando would become the best method actor in the world. The 1950s were the prime years of Brando's career. With box office hits such as A Streetcar Named Desire and On the Waterfront, he was finally on the map. His available method of acting would solidify every movie's success in the ensuing years of 1950. He would engulf himself completely in the character and follow routines outside of acting to live his life as the character he was playing. His teacher, Elia Kassan, would say, it's like he's carrying his own spotlight. Fame, however, came at an expense. In his early years, Brando was notoriously rude and hard-headed. This characteristic would haunt him as he couldn't portray any degree of professionalism. He once rudely dismissed director Roberto Rossellini because the director had told him that it was an honor to meet him. This behavior was detrimental to his acting career as critics would bash him and directors refrained from working with him. According to Ellen Adler, daughter of Stella Adler, he loved to study people and being famous got in the way of that because now they were looking at him instead of the way it had been before the fame. Despite this, Brando's revolutionary acting continued on an uphill trend in the 1950s. 
The 1960s, however, were a different story. If the 1950s were the best years of Brando's career, the 1960s were arguably the worst. The infallible method of acting had taken a toll on him and he had lost his interest in his pursuit. He only thought of it as a means to make money. Brando was aware of his fallout as he would later write, Some of the films I made during the 60s were successful. Some weren't. Some, like the ninth of the following day, I made only for the money. Others, like Candy, I did because a friend asked me to, and I didn't want to turn him down. His temperament worsened, and he forced directors to do retakes until he was satisfied with them. His erratic behavior didn't help his cause either. In his eyes, his self-interest was of more value than his career. In The Atlantic, Kale wrote that Brando was antisocial because he knew society was crap. He was a hero to youth because he was strong enough not to take the crap. But now Brando himself was of the people whom he despised in his rebellious years. He and others like him were buffons, shamelessly, pathetically mocking their public reputations. While Brando was more indulged in his personal life, he wasn't successful there either. In fact, the best method actor was never a decent family man. He married three times and had children in all three marriages. He also had other affairs, most notably a long-standing affair with a maid called Maria Cristina Ruiz. He is also rumored to have had affairs with Jackie Collins, Marilyn Monroe, and Jackie Kennedy. In many of his affairs, his significant others have reported abuse, cheating, and emotional betrayals. Whatever Brando committed to do, it all ended in vain. With a declining career accompanied by receding mental health, the best method actor was on the trajectory to become irrelevant for the rest of his life. But while his life continued to be miserable, the 1970s engraved the name Malin Brandon on the genre of acting forever. The Godfather was a major success, with some critics even calling it the best movie to date. With this movie, Brando proved that his initial success wasn't a fluke, and he still had the charm and charisma within him to lead a box office hit. When Brando was finally headed towards redemption, he boycotted the Oscars and, in his stead, sent the little-known Native American actress Little Feather to receive the award. This behavior came under severe scrutiny by the movie industry, as actors and critics alike bombarded Brando with criticism for rejecting such a prestigious award. While this event further added to Brando's notoriety, his calls for supporting the representation of Native Americans in Hollywood would be celebrated for decades to come. The last tango in Paris was Brando's second major success after his fallout. However, while he was away filming the movie, his first wife, Anna Cashby, hired Mexican thugs to kidnap their firstborn for $10,000. The detail surrounding the kidnapping was not widely publicized, but it is believed that Cashby took Christian without Brando's consent due to her concerns about his upbringing and the influence she believed Brando had on their son. Cashfree allegedly felt that Brando's lifestyle and the chaotic environment surrounding him would be detrimental to Christian's well-being. This event caused an even greater strain between the ex-married couple, and eventually, custody of the child was rewarded to Brando. Brando's career eventually came to a halt, and he announced his retirement in the 1980s. While he would try a comeback nine years later, it was all for naught as he had already fallen out of grace and was getting older by the day. After the kidnapping event, his private life had already been publicized and he was against involving his children further in the toxic nature of pop culture. Therefore, he hoped for a peaceful retirement with the wealth he had generated. Just as Brando's name had almost diminished from the media, his worst fear came to life. His daughter's boyfriend was shot dead in Brando's den, and the perpetrator was none other than his firstborn, Christian. Christian, who had heard that his half-sister was abused by her boyfriend, had shot him dead under the effect of intoxication. To Christian's horror, it was later found that his half-sister Cheyenne was lying about the abuse. Brando, who wanted to stay clear from the toxic fame, now found himself in the spotlight. Reports of this incident was all over the media, and Brando found himself under a new wave of criticism. Five years later, the daughter in question killed herself. 
Brando, who was already a broken man, had now shattered into several pieces. After this incident, Brando appeared visibly distraught throughout the rest of his life. He gained 300 pounds and the once handsome actor was now in a pitiful state. He was so paranoid that he used audio tapes and CCTV cameras obsessively. These audio tapes perfectly encapsulate Brando in his last decade. He expresses even more paranoia and distaste for fame than he did before. Most actors like getting their name in the papers, he says. They like getting all the attention. I very often am struck with the illusion of success. Quite often, it's hard meeting people because you can see they have prejudged you not to be treated normally. To have people staring at you like an animal in a zoo, a creature from a distant land. He mentions how we always felt misrepresented and misunderstood and how the critics would use this misunderstanding to their advantage. He also mentioned his distaste for his father and how it sipped into his life and haunted him until his very death. Marlon Brando died on July 1, 2004. He had failing eyesight, liver cancer and diabetes. In the pursuit of success, Brando couldn't find happiness. And just when he settled for peace, his life nagged him until he was completely torn apart. While Brando's life was depressing, his legacy remains. Brando's method acting continues to inspire countless actors. He was rebellious but good-natured, temperamental but friendly, an unsuccessful family man but a great father. Needless to say, Brando's legacy will live on forever. In his words, to grasp the full significance of life is the actor's duty, to interpret it is his problem, and to express it is dedication. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click enjoy and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.